Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Global. I'm your host, Bo Yang. Today we are in Yangzhou, and in this video, we are going to show you the amazing day in Yangzhou, covering the cuisine, the most important tourist attractions, the old streets, as well as the lifestyle in this amazing city. Yangzhou is a city located in eastern China, Jiangsu province, home to 4.5 million people with a long history dating back to the 5th century BC and has been an important center for trade and culture throughout the centuries. The city is known for its beautiful gardens, historical architecture, and also named by UNESCO, the city of gastronomy. Yet abroad, very few people even heard about Yangzhou. Because even in the Yangtze Delta, there are so many larger and well-known cities like Shanghai, Nanjing, Suzhou, Hangzhou, etc. Unlike these mega cities in China, Yangzhou as a third tier city has its own rhythm. It's calm, traditional, peaceful, and relaxing. Here, people just walk half the pace compared to people living in Shanghai. So we started our morning at 8 a.m. by riding to the old streets of Yangzhou to meet our host and have morning tea in one of the most iconic local restaurants. Well,我给你介绍一下，这个是我们扬州的这个早茶里面一些比较经典的几道菜。这个呢是半干丝，这道是大煮干丝。为什么说这个东西比较特殊呢？因为干丝这个东西啊，可能就主要是在我们扬州
，呃，也是我们扬州特产的一个茶，早茶早茶，所以一定要喝茶，尝一尝啊，这样子的。<笑> so, what is 葵龙珠 ？It is actually a mixture of three types of tea: 葵珍 from 安徽 province, 龙井 from 浙江 province, and 珠兰 from 扬州 local. Hence, the tea is also called Three Province Tea. Now, tea has three very important elements: 色香味 In English, the color, the aroma, and the taste. So, the mixture of these three types of tea takes the strength from each of them: the color from Huizhen. The aroma from Zhu Lan and the taste from Longjing. 应该说有早茶文化的城市，呃，全国还是比较多的，包括广州，包括四川那边。但是扬州可能相对而言呢，它有它自己的特点，呃，因为它这边早茶这种文化跟扬州的这种，呃，闲适，呃的这种风格是，呃，一脉相承的。同时，也因为过去扬州的这个经济的发达，所以说它这个这块。早茶文化就比较盛行。确实，今天看这么早，九点钟不到，这么多人周末在。对，我们在广州那边，<笑>他们吃早茶可能稍微迟一点。对，<笑>我们吃早就会早一点。我们这边就相对而言，我们的这边早茶的时间更早一点。嗯，来尝尝，尝尝。那边是早午饭，<笑>对他们是迎来吃早饭。这是汤毛，这个是相当于肉毛一样。啊。啊。谢谢小心点。其实里面除了汤汁就没有什么其他东西，啊，一吸完之后就没了，其实没什么东西。他不是说拌汤，然后里面还有其他馅料，他其实除了汤汁以后就没有什么了。他在包的时候是把这个汤呢，做成像就像这个外面这种皮冻一样的东西，啊，放进去，然后一加热，它就它就化掉了，它就化掉了，它这样的，不是水怎么包的，它是这个意思。这个富春茶社在解放前就有了，所以它不是，它相当于后来被收归国有的。它不是说解放后以后，哎，我们这边哎，大家再再去这个，那种是属于集体性质。我们这是收归国有的，它在富春、富春、野村都是解放前就有。扬州三把刀里面有一把就是修脚刀，修脚刀就是在浴室里面的，锄刀、修脚刀，还有一个是剪剪刀，剪刀，剪刀是理发，剪刀其实是理发。<笑>我我们在里面周边稍微转一下，那我我们走一走，好。After our morning tea, our local host showed us around the old streets in the former city center of Yangzhou. Unlike Shanghai, where most of the old streets in the city center have already been modernized, we could still visit many places that left the traces of history in Yangzhou. While walking along the old streets, we saw the three knives of Yangzhou, which was mentioned during our morning tea: the kitchen knife, the barber knife, and the foot knife, as an important part of Yangzhou's cultural heritage. Kitchen knife again showing how important cuisine is for Yangzhou people, as we have seen during the morning tea. Piece of bean curd that is 1.5 centimeters thick can be sliced into 10 to 20 layers. The foot knife is a traditional tool used for massage and relaxation. It is made of metal and has a curved blade that is used to scrap and rub the soles of the foot. In order to promote blood circulation and relieve stress, it shows the relaxing lifestyle of Yangzhou people. The barber knife is also very famous, as it was used by Qianlong Emperor. All three knives are not only practically used in the daily lives of Yangzhou people, but also demonstrates the skills of the masters that use them. Here is the previous bathhouse, where the foot knife is often used. Another important element you can't miss 
in the old streets is the influence by salt merchants in the city. The salt merchants were known for their wealth and influence, and they played a crucial role in the economy and politics of this region. They were also involved in philanthropy, donating money to support local schools, hospitals, and other institutions. Lingnan Association was a place where Guangdong businessmen gathered for meetings to connect with fellows, conduct trade, gather intelligence, and used for accommodation and entertainment purposes during the Qing Dynasty. We also visited He Garden, which was close to the old streets. So we are now at He Garden. He Garden was belonging to the family He, which was a very rich family in the Qing Dynasty in here in Yangzhou. So this garden in the past was called the number one garden in the late Qing Dynasty. He Garden was built during the Qing Dynasty by a salt merchant named He Zhidao and has since become a popular tourist attraction for its intricate design and beautiful scenery. Also, more than 50 series, movies, and documents have been filmed in He Garden, including the classical Dream of the Red Chamber, or also called the Story of the Stone. What makes He Garden unique is the corridor on the second floor. Architects believe this is the only one in Jiangnan, and the one kilometer corridor perfectly connects the buildings within the garden. After the visit to He Garden, we were all hungry and tried out a special dish, noodles with Asian swamp ale topping. A snake-like ale very popular in the region, but it was also my first time having such a noodle. It was very delicious and special. We also tried out the iconic Yangzhou fried rice, which was disappointing. I think even I can do better. After lunch, we spontaneously decided to go for a Zhuanxiang experience. Let's have a look at this peaceful and relaxing experience. First, she explained the history of Zhuanxiang. Then she went through the equipment for Zhuanxiang. The incense burner should be two-thirds full, and these three devices are typically placed in a triangle during the Ming and Qing dynasty. In ancient times, people will also place a vase of flowers besides them. Afterwards, she started to explain how to make a Zhuanxiang. First, take out the tools beneath the incense burner. During the whole process, we should sit up straight. 
Now loosen the ash with the tool. This cloth is specifically used to clean up the tool. Now flatten the ash clockwise to make the surface smooth. Apparently, this is a job that requires patience and was more difficult than I thought. The brush can be used to clean the sides of the incense burner. Now we need to select a mold for our incense. After placing the mold on top of the ash, we start filling the incense into the mold. Afterwards, we remove the extra incense and then knock slightly on the mold to loosen the incense from the mold. Now we remove the mold and ignite the incense. It will take 20 minutes to burn through the incense. Our last stop today is a scenic lake, a five-star tourist attraction, the highest level of tourist attraction in China. So we are now in front of Shouxixu. In English, the name is called Slender West Lake. So this is the most iconic tourist attraction within Yangzhou. And the name comes from the fact that the widest part of the lake is only 160 meters wide. From the drone, you can see that the lake is more like a river with bridges across it. During the weekend, you can see many locals and tourists in the park, enjoying the view, taking photos, riding boats, or just relaxing in the park. Rumors said that one day, Qianlong Emperor was visiting Slender West Lake and told the governors that this scene is very similar to Beihai in Beijing, except the white pagoda is missing. Now, one of the eight richest salt merchants heard this and built a replicate with salt overnight to please the emperor. When I saw the name 24 bridges on the map, I was wondering, where are they? Because I only saw one. Until I heard one of the tourist guides said the name actually comes from the historical rumor that Emperor Yang of Sui came here with 24 beauties on one day. And since in Chinese beauties is called Jiao and bridge is called Qiao, which are very similar in pronunciation. Hence the name of this bridge, 24 bridges. 24桥 So that's it for our video today. What attracted your attention the most in Yangzhou? The food, old streets, He Garden, Zhuanxiang, or Slender West Lake? If you have any comments, questions, or topics that you would like to see in our next videos, feel free to comment in the section below. So if you enjoyed our video today and our channel, Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to share so that more people can see our awesome videos in the future. Here, we inspire learning, exchange, and business. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next video.